This is our first collaborative uh, webinar between the National Auto Body Council and WIN. My name is Elizabeth Stein. I am going to be your moderator and your host for today. And I am actually, I have the privilege of being able to serve on both the Women's Industry Network Board. I am a secretary on the board, as well as I am co-chair of the membership committee. I also happen to serve on the National Auto Body Council Board, where I am the vice president of industry relations. Both of these incredible organizations, to me, help our industry move forward and be able to shine a positive light in what we're trying to achieve, which is an industry of excellence. So I am honored to be a part of both of those. I'd also like to introduce you to our esteemed guests, Ms. Sherelle Locke. So Sherelle has been in the automotive industry for over 17 years. She joined us, like most of us have joined. Uh, she got lured in through finance and insurance and then now oversees seven collision repair centers over three states. So Georgia, South Carolina, and Alabama. So Sherelle, thank you for being on. It's a pleasure. I'm looking forward to it. Miss April Lausch. April is also an amazing operator. April grew her career from starting as an administrative assistant and moved up to being an award-winning um, manager of Faulkner Collision Center in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Both of these women uh, have won so many awards, it's hard to list, and I'm so honored to have them be a part of it. And as far as win, it's a testament to all of us, you know, what you've achieved. So thank you so much for everything that you do for our industry and helping to promote women in the industry and what we can, how we can grow our careers. So thank you for being with us today. Today, we're going to actually talk about the National Automatic Council First Responder Emergency Extrication Program. It's called FREE. Uh, the free program. And with that, this is always, I remember when George pitched this years ago and brought this idea to the National Auto Body Council, and it hit a particular chord because my father is a firefighter. So the middle picture is an example when you ask your parents to send you a photo, what you end up getting. Um, but the first photo is our family. So you got to love our matching blue suits. You know, this is how we rocked it going to church. But my father being a firefighter, um, one of the things is, is being able to have access to training. Several times he was put in situations where it was seconds between, the de between it being a tra tragedy and being able to save a life. And so having the latest training was absolutely important. And when I found out that most fire departments, their training budget for a car is $250, and usually they end up with a dilapidated old car, and looking at how highly sophisticated vehicles were becoming, I was concerned for fellow first responders like my father that, you know, because that lives with you when it ends up being a tragedy. And I wanted to be involved and help pay it forward. And I'm so proud of the work that George has done. I love this story. George, wait, go back. George, this story is amazing because this fire, this is an example of what we're doing. So this firefighter, George, did the training. And then all of a sudden he noticed that this gentleman was walking out with a you know, with a part of the car and George is like, um, sir, I, I, what are you doing? And the reason why this firefighter did that is because the tools and equipment that his department had was unable to cut through the vehicle. And he took this piece of the car to take it back to his chief to show why they needed better tools and equipment. So I love this story. Thank you for sharing it, George. Our first responders program. So, um, it, you know, the goal of it is to provide advanced education and guidance to first responders. And they actually get to practice cutting techniques on advanced vehicles. We, they are trained on, uh, or they, we address the high strength steel and the composite materials, the multiple airbags and the onboard technology and the changing vehicle design. So we know as you know, collision repairs, because we're continuously trained and as the cars get highly sophisticated, but for a lot of the first responders, this is the first time they get to see this. I love to the left-hand side is the, is the coins that we also provide. We provide these for the shops so that they can actually pass these out to the first responders and several first responders actually collect these coins. So when they attend multiple giftings. Through the NABC and its members, we've helped educate over 4,300 first responders. The cost to being a member of the National Auto Body Council to participate, to be able to put on a free event is $500 and that provides you all of the support that helps provide you George 
that helps provide you Debbie who does the marketing. We have a fully supportive staff to make sure that you throw a successful event. Our program is led by Kyle, who is our committee chair and brings just incredible energy to the program. And George Avery is our program manager who is passionate, who thank goodness for us didn't retire and got roped back into being in our industry and leading the charge for the program manager. And as of right now, we have 83, George, just nod your head, 83 pro first responder events that are gonna be scheduled for this year. Awesome. Why is this important? I'm gonna play a quick video from, let's hear from some first responders, nothing like hearing from, you know, hearing from the horse's mouth. All right, I'm here with Christy and Amanda, and they are instructors with Hearst, the Jaws of Life company. And tell me a little bit about what you're going to be teaching today. What we're gonna be teaching today is we're gonna use advanced technology vehicles and teaching the first responders how to extricate their patients safely out of these vehicles. Um, the reason why that we do this is because the, the strength of these vehicles is a lot higher than what they used to be. So when you use these tools, there's certain ways to extricate these patients to get the patients safely out of the vehicles and not cause any further harm to the patients. Great. All right, well, good luck today, and we appreciate you coming out and, and you know, instructing these uh, first responders because it's very important. Thank you. Thank you. That was a wonderful event. And here's how, here's how it actually works. The Collision Repair Shop requests to host an NABC free event for the community. By the way, if you would like, like Axo Nobel, no pressure, I would like to host it at your corporate headquarters. You can also throw it there. We have several manufacturers that have contacted George and would like to host it at their facility. We are willing to host it. If you would like to host the event, we would love to do that or even Enterprise or Hertz. The NABC we work with to secure the vehicles, we're, it's supplied by insurance companies, manufacturers, even rental car companies. We just ask that they donate late model salvage vehicles to give the first responders the opportunity to be able to cut into something that's a late model vehicle. The NABC coordinates the delivery of all the vehicles. So we coordinate the delivery of the vehicle to your location. You don't have to worry about that. And we also engage with Hearst or Genesis as the tool and training provider for the event. So, and they help identify the first responders. So you don't, so all you have to do is give us a date and a location, and we put you in touch with the, with the instructor, and then we help coordinate with the tool and training providers for the event, and then they host the first responders. We provide a step-by-step -step orientation for hosting your event. If any of you know George, you know that this is very detailed and process-driven. And we also provide you the materials needed to invite your first responders. We'll create the invitation and we also will help contact your local media. We also can provide on-site support if you need. The other thing that National Automotive Council also does is we help coordinate. So one of the things that I always recommend is you're going to want to probably provide a lunch. Firefighters like to eat. So, um, so being able to provide a, you know, a lunch and being able to you know, coordinate that. That's some of the on-site coordination. And you also will want to follow up with the media and your community as well. So that's something that I would recommend for the shops to be able to follow up with. Here's an example. So Allstate provided the vehicle. So when people, when people or companies provide the vehicles, you see that there's signage so that that way it's all around the vehicle. So that that way, when there's any media coverage, that we also cross promote the, our partners. So we also provide those signs for your location as well. So here's an example of you know Channel 13 came out, and here's an example of an event. So Sherelle, this is from Sherelle's event, and where they actually hosted the where they actually hosted one of the events, and that there is the news article that came with it. So the fantastic thing is. As, as, our, as people are going back to work and things are opening up, people are very sensitive and wanting to deal with businesses that are community oriented. This is a fantastic way to be able to help promote yourself as being a community oriented event. And also who doesn't like helping support first responders? 
Now with that, um, Sherelle, I'd like to introduce you and if you could talk about your free event that you hosted. Absolutely. Um, so I had the honor and privilege of hosting one just a, a couple of months ago in Warner Robins at uh, one of my shops there. We had uh, about 30 firefighters there, so it was a large event. Um, the cars were provided from Geico. Uh, Hearst was there, met the gals that she saw in the interview just a minute ago were the, were the trainers at the event we did. And um, it was just, it was wonderful because you could truly see how grateful these gentlemen were. Um, of course, my uh, paint vendor jumped in and made a big old steak lunch. So they really were happy about that. But it, they all were very, very, very grateful for the training. That more than one time well, was I told, you know, we don't get to do this often. Oh, we may get a car a year. And, and, and you know, there were several younger firefighters who, you know, had their chiefs off to the side and were talking with them about what they were seeing. Um, matter of fact, the gentleman there on the right on the picture is the uh, fire chief for the Warner Robins uh, fire department. And um, he actually came back and brought me one of their coins at, at the end of the event. So it was, it was really, um, I'm, I'm big on training for my shops, for my technicians, for my estimators. And, you know, when we stop learning, it's, it becomes a problem. And these guys, they, they deserve the opportunity not to be put in a position, like Liz said, where, you know, it's, it's life or death and they haven't had the opportunity. I would gladly host another one. I had several folks ask me if I'd do it again. Um, this was the first time I had done one of these and I really, truly enjoyed it. Thank you, Cheryl. Can you explain, how did you get involved? Like, how did we volunteer draft you into the free program? Well, I had, I've done several, several recycle rides. And so, right. um, okay. I, I, you know, already know about that. And then my buddy Kyle called me and drafted me for the, for the free event. And I said, sure, I'd be glad to do it. And I, because this facility has got a large um, yard and so it worked out really well. We actually had like seven cars there. So they had plenty of cars to cut on. Um, but yeah, Kyle's the one who brought me in the loop on that. Yeah, he's really good at drafting. It's hard to say no to Kyle, right? Yeah, and then what did you see? So you talked, you touched on, you know, the, the firefighters followed back up with you. Like what positive impact did you see in your community? Well, I know that, um, you know, the younger guys and there were, because we had a good mix. I mean, we had some, you know, senior firefighters and we had a lot of younger ones there as well. You know, I know that these the younger ones who maybe even you know haven't been put in a position yet to have to be faced with something like this. And if it was my family member in the car, um, you know, I can say that I helped to contribute that these guys got the opportunity to to do this. And then, so you talked about how your paint vendor, you know, he provided a steak lunch, which is, by the way, let's set the expectation that's not a usual lunch. That's yeah, amazing. No. <laughs> I was expecting box lunches, but <laughs> right, right, right. I, I could just see it, you know, you know, we're an industry of like, oh, I we did steak and lobs. I can't compete. So um, Cheryl, how did you engage with your vendors to help pull that part off to where it was kind of this collaborative partnership? Well, I um I've always looked at my uh my paint as my vendor partner, not not a job or anything like that. He's very active in a lot of things that we do. Um He's on my conference calls with my managers once a month. He, you know, he's just very active in our business. And so when I asked, there was, there was no hesitation. I mean, he was all in, brought a grill, tents. I mean, he had it all set up. Um, that was, it was a little over the top, but the guys loved it. Well, oh, that's fantastic. And is there any tips that you would give for anybody considering um, engaging and putting on an event like this? Um, I would say don't hesitate to do it because, um, you know, I thought, oh, this is going to be a lot of work, but really and truly George did a great job of, of um, with the orientation and, and setting the expectation up front on what was going to be required. Um, again, I had good support from my own, but from the shop, I mean, they started cleaning the shop a week ahead of time, you know, they got it all nice, nice, my vendor with the food. So it really was a fairly seamless event. There wasn't, you know, it wasn't that much work. It wasn't like it was just agonizing to put it on. It was really fairly easy have an electric car there um but that was something that on several of the surveys that they requested was like more stuff about the electric car so maybe if you're going to plan on hosting an event maybe you actually i did not have a um salvage i just had a new car there so that we were able to just look at some things but if you maybe actually could get your hands on a salvage one um to where they could get in there and work on one of those 
Fantastic. That great, great tip, Cheryl. That's, that's incredible as uh, electric cars are becoming more and more prevalent. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for that. Uh -huh. Well, thank you, Cheryl. Well, and then yeah. Miss April Lausch. So April, you've thrown three events. Can you talk about your experience? I, um, I had a, the first one I had was about 30 firefighters and they all wanted me to have a second one right away. So a year later we had a second one and we had 80 firefighters. Oh, wow. um, each, each had a wait list for cancellations um, because there was that many. So um, we had the great events. Uh, this, the third one was another, a big one with around 80 to 100 firefighters. So um, it was, uh, it was definitely rewarding. Uh, they actually let me cut as well. So I got to be able to cut on the metal using their tools um, and putting on their equipment, which is really heavy. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it, was, uh, it was a really, really great, great program. And uh, without George and all his uh, emails with all the agendas and everything, it, was, it makes it very easy. Well, that, that is amazing. And for, can you give me some tips for planning an NABC free event? Like what are some lessons learned for, so some of us, some of us that have never put on one can kind of take from, you know, what you've learned. You definitely need to give yourself at least four months in advance okay. because um, the cars need to be able to be found and brought in, towed in, um, depending how many you want to be able to cut. So that takes a little time to get them organized, get them in, um, you know, get them set up where you want. The, uh, the instructor will have about a 45 minute presentation to the firefighters. So you have to make sure you're set up to with chairs, um, cords, electrical outlets. They usually bring their own uh, slides um, to be able to be set up. So you gotta be able to have room for that. Um, prior to cutting. Um, the, uh, the NABC does arrange getting the cars um, and, you know, all of that part of it. You just got to be ready for them when they get here. Uh, and and how, how often did you work with your instructors? Like how often so, did you meet in that four month period? And in the four months, we probably met bi-weekly um, via okay. phone. Um, and then two months out, we would talk weekly and also meet um, probably the last month we met weekly just to then, get the final plans. Yeah, that, that, that's wonderful. That, that's great advice because it seems like communication is key in that, right? So being able to talk to the instructor and yeah, the bigger the right the, expectation. Correct. Yeah, the, uh, the bigger the event, the more instructors they need. So um, they got to find them. Uh, I know we had instructors come up from North Carolina, um, which is about a nine hour drive um, to be able to help train uh, along with Hearst and those instructors too have to travel. So the bigger the event, the more instructors they need and you, they need to make sure that they have enough um, because they're, you know, they split everybody. So everybody has enough time to cut. Fantastic. And then how did you engage the local media? I know you got some cover, unique coverage. So how did you, you know, hit, as much as this is altruistic and we're doing it because it's the right thing, it's also nice to kind of highlight the facility, right, as a community-oriented business. So Deb did a really great job um, doing a press release. So that got emailed out to all the local media, newspapers, magazines in the area. Um, and then she also sent it to us. So we actually sent it to all of the insurance agents for the cars that were donated. So State Farm donated last year. So we um, sent it to all the local State Farm agents and we actually had the agents come um, and watch. And then they also spoke to the firefighters as well. So they participated. Um, so we had good uh, media coverage with, with all of those things. But um, yeah, Deb did a great job getting a hold of everybody. Uh, she already had the contacts, knew, who to email, who to call, and she would tell you, hey, this person's coming at this time, so. <laughs> yeah, and that's Deb, Deb with, uh, who represents for National Audubon Council, right? Yes, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yep. Perfect. 
Yeah, no, it's a nice, it's a nice supportive environment with that. Is there anything, is there anything else that you'd like to impart with anyone that, that you'd like to say about the program? It, I, I would have to, um, to double back and say that it is really easy. Um, it, it looks harder and intimidating, but it's not. It is absolutely rewarding um, to watch what they do. Um, we had a carbon fiber uh, body shell that we had from a training wow. center. We partnered with one of the OEM manufacturers and um, they came out and they cut carbon fiber for the first time and the firefighters never cut it. Um, they didn't know how dangerous it was. Um, you know, they had to mask up and it was a really awesome training experience. And they all thanked me for being able to, uh, to, to bring something that they've never even cut on before. So um, that, that is uh, it, great to, to watch that because, you know, hopefully my children or, or my family or anybody else's family, you know, if they're in a situation where they, the firefighters need to get them uh, saved, then, you know, it, it was nice to be able to contribute to something. I, I, a hundred percent. You're, you're dead right. I think of that every time we do these trainings, April and Sherelle, we talked about that as well, right? That, um, you know, we've trained 4,300, but man, wouldn't it be awesome when we get to a hundred thousand, right? And if we, because we, this is us doing our part as an industry and being able to help support with those trainings, um, for our community, because we never want to hear that they, um, didn't know how to cut into the vehicle and the vehicles are too diverse and too highly sophisticated to not be able to provide this, right? So this is another, um, this is an example of an event that we hosted at Caliber, USAA donated the vehicle. And this shows you like, you know, the training week, they get right in there, right? So the firefighter, the first responders are able to get in there to be able to see the, the vehicle and to be able to touch and feel it, you know, when they're on the side of a highway, they don't get that opportunity to be able to marvel at, wow, this is a carbon fiber, right? They're about getting the family in and out and getting everybody safe. So this allows them the opportunity to really be able to not only receive the training, but also to be able to really look at the vehicle and to look at, you know, the different areas where you cut. For getting started with the program, if there's something, so if you would like to host an event, if you would like to help support like an April or Sherelle, an event that we have, please feel free to um, visit the National Auto Body Council First Responders Extrication. George will happy is happy to orientate you as he travels around the country. You never know when he'll be in your backyard. And then you can complete the event, uh, the event request form. So, and also join the National Auto Body Council or win if you're not a member of either amazing organization. These are two fantastic organizations in ABC and WIN that are lifting up our industry. And we very much appreciate your time and attention and support for these because together we provide an industry of excellence. Thank you so much for your time.